Well, let's stay with uh, reaction to President Sir Ramaphosa's announcements uh, this afternoon. I'm now joined by Mike Singange from Kosatu and Reneva Furi from the South African Communist Party, both of them, of course, allies of uh, the governing party, the ANC. Your thoughts? Good afternoon. Uh, well, we're satisfied with the changes that have been effected. We recognize that it's only a few months to the elections. The changes signify some, some sort of stability because the ministers have experience and knowledge in those fields. And we are particularly pleased around, about the efforts to um, merge the telecommunications and the, and the communications portfolios. Okay, Mark? Yeah, correct. We, we welcome it because we, we, we thought that it is important to fill in the gaps that were there. I mean, in a government that is going through the difficulties that we have, such as ours, it was important to have pre political principles that are going to be held accountable for what is happening in those departments. So it was important for the president to fill all the gap more than anything. It was not a cabinet reshuffle. It was almost like a, a forced substitution, if you say so. Okay. Uh, now, Reneva, um, you, you were talking about the... You, how happy you are about the fact that uh, communications and uh, telecoms and postal services have now been merged. Fact of the matter is, though, is that that's how they were mm. uh, before former President Jacob Zuma decided to dismantle it. And what was strange, and I remember uh, discussing this with people at the time, was that uh, over the years there was a deliberateness about bringing them together about putting communications, because there was a great deal of convergence. If you go back 15 years ago or so, that's what the talk was about. But then President Jacobson was allowed to dismantle that and actually take the country back to square one. There's two elements there. The one is that for a, a, a period now, they've been saying that cabinet is, is too big. Um, as the South African Communist Party, we've been arguing that if we're going to streamline the public service we must start with cabinet and so starting with this portfolio is a, is a it's a very good uh, it's a good point of entry but then as you correctly say the telecommunications environment now is is one of convergence um, there's a, an interplay of a number of platforms so to have the two departments separated at a policy level simply didn't make sense. And we are happy that we are looking at integrating the policy environment once again. Uh, Mike, uh, I mean, doesn't it take us back to, uh, you know, one of the issues that I think have been forgotten over the past, what, eight years, um, especially, and that is how much power really a president gets to have to even go against, uh, if, uh, uh, I mean, the broad thrust of the ANC's policies, which was that um, in the telecom space, as Reneva was saying just now, the, the argument was for convergence, but he, there he was allowed to actually do the opposite. Look, our, our principle is that this is are not the only departments that uh, should actually <clears throat> not been, have been dismantled in the first place or should be merged. And uh, we, we think that uh, with the spirit that President Ramaphosa is going now, more departments are still going to be merged because we don't think we need some of the departments as they, in the current states that they are. But we should understand that President Ramaphosa is completing a fifth administration as led by President Zuma. So this is actually not his uh, own cabinet or own, his own administration. He has not won election. We, our view is that once he wins the election, he's going to do more. But I think a chance has been given, as you correctly say, for the eight years. You must understand that once the president is given a prerogative to construct a government in order for him to deliver the mandate given by electorate so that it can be held accountable, he must be given a chance to construct a government in the best manner that he thinks that he's going to, to perform. So it was perhaps correct for all concerns to give President Zuma a chance when he decided to say, if in order for me to deliver on the mandate and the effective government, this is how I want to construct my cabinet. But it has proven that uh, it has not been effective. It has actually escalated the public wage bill. It has actually uh, contributed to Indian alien economy that we are in. So, a call is being made now, reduce cabinet, and I think uh, to make it more effective and more accountable. So we think it, it was correct. We, we could not have uh, said it should stop, it should do it at that time. But experience is the best teacher. Uh, but whenever that said, what Mike, uh, I mean, is saying that is, 
doesn't this raise uh, uh, another perhaps important point, which is that much as the president um, has a prerogative to, you know, appoint uh, or handpick even um, his executive, at the very least, shouldn't there be a requirement that says, take us into confidence, uh, ex give us, explain to us the rationale of what you're trying to do, instead of like second guessing, saying maybe it was because he thought that this was the best way to deliver, especially when uh, whatever he does actually goes against what his movement and organization stands for. The lesson from the Zuma era is that we need to reaffirm and strengthen the capacity and the powers of the deployment committee. So, as you correctly say, that Sometimes it is not opportune to allow the president to exercise his ex executive authority without any form of accountability. So we've been seeing since President Ramaphosa's um, appointment, he's been taking the deployment committee a lot more seriously. Um, he's consulting the deployment committee, he's interacting with it, but also with regards to the changes within cab cabinet and the restructuring thereof. Uh, we have the, the Alliance Political Council that is sitting quite regularly, and so even at a policy level, he's now engaging the Alliance. But I mean, but there too, I mean, there too, on the question of the deployment committee, a lot of questions uh, have arisen uh, given the way that deployment committee has worked, how it has been constituted, the powers that it has, and how it relates to not only the ANC, but in particular the president. Because oftentimes it has actually been an instrument that a sitting president uses essentially to rubber stamp whatever he. Uh, wants to do. We shouldn't forget that uh, in, the past, in the first five years of President Zuma's presidency, uh, the power and the authority uh, of the deployment committee and the consultation processes was actually there at, the, at its le at level best. We must not uh, conflate the fact that uh, it was the end of uh, President Zuma's presidency, in particular the second five years, was actually a disaster. So even when uh, he was reconstructing the cabinet, the manner in which he was constructing, there would have been uh, uh, him and offered by him to take into confidence both the movement, the co deployment committee, and the alliance partners. At certain instances, we will not agree with him, but like I said, in good faith, you thought you must give him a chance because ultimately he's the state president who must account to the nation. About, but we're saying, as she's correctly said, we, we have learned lessons. And therefore, the spirit uh, within which the consultation must take place is something that we're working very hard to change now. In the current president of President Ramaphosa, whom he has not won election, he has not really been given a chance to, to take uh, in terms of his sixth ad administration that is no, But the mandate is not to the president, it's to the party. So it's the same party that remains in power. So, and people vote for a party and not for a president. So to that extent, he's there to execute the um, uh, I mean, policies of the ANC and its priorities. But, we are, but we are, that's why President Zuma is not the president of the state today because he started to deviate from the, the, the movement. Uh, but just the party that also that, like, got, got... That's why the party got that, rid of that President got, That got rid of him. But yes. I do want <laughs> to, to go back to that point um, as, as perhaps a last point uh, for you, uh, Reneva, as well. Um, and that is to say, did he really consult at the beginning or was it because you were all reading from the same bo hymn book at, uh, at the beginning. So there were, there were no real like, conflicts. Everybody accepted each other's bona fides, and people went along you know, with the decisions that were taken at the time. Um, I want to concur with Mike that in the beginning there was a, a spirit of consultation. There was even a, a strong element of, of policy alignment in that the, the left axis, as we would call it, almost had hegemony over the, over the, the policy tra trajectory of government. Um, it's, it's a pity that towards the end of President Zuma's term, that practice was no longer complied with. And, um, well, we've learned from that. We've strengthened the deployment mechanisms, as you know, as the Communist Party. We've put the debate of the reconstruct, reconfiguring reconfiguration of the alliance on the table and um, 
this kind of consultation, both in terms of the determination of the executive and the policy trajectory that's going to be followed, is a key element in the reconfiguration of the alliance document. But, but if, if we take that to be true, though, uh, Mike, the fact of the matter is that from a policy trajectory that Reneva is talking about, in fact, you were closer with uh, Jacob Zuma than was the case during Tabumbegi's uh, reign, for example. So, again, that too <laughs> raises more questions than it answers them. No, 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 that's, that's true. We're closer to him because, uh, like uh, I'm saying, the, in terms of where the country needed to go when President Zuma started his presidency, there was a bit consensus. Um, it, it, it happened, indeed, you're correct, we had issues with the President Vega then, which is why we had uh, serious fights yeah. with him. Yes, <laughs> okay, and everything else. But uh, look, uh, experience is it's the best teacher. So as things moved on, it was clear that uh, that which we thought we have consensus around with President Zuma, we're no longer holding. That is why we campaigned also very hard for his removal. And that's why at the end of the day, the party had to do what it did. So that's why we're saying we are now introducing a new spirit of transparency and consultation, meaningfully, not just a question of informing parties on these matters. And we think that we're moving in the right direction. Again, we will fight with the current incumbent issue, the same tendencies that uh, happened during Beke on Zuma uh, repeat themselves. We are here. We have got nothing to lose. We will continue to fight those, those tendencies. Thanks to both of you for you. coming through um, this afternoon.